Senator Wicker, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, General Berry, let me quote from your prepared statement. Beijing appears willing to defer the use of military force as long as it considers that unification with Taiwan can be negotiated and that the cost of conflict outweigh the benefits. Um, General Barrier, I believe the United States should prepare Taiwan and send a clear message to Beijing that a military invasion would be too costly. I also believe the primary objective of the United States and its allies uh, with regard to Taiwan should not be so much to repel a Chinese attack, but to prevent it from ever occurring. So, General, from your assessment of China's capabilities and timeline, as well as Taiwan's current defensive posture, what needs to be done? What can the United States be doing for or supplying to Taiwan in order to prevent a Chinese attack from ever occurring? Senator, thank you for that question. First, I would say that I, I believe the PRC would rather not do it by force. I think they would rather do this uh, peacefully over time. Uh, there are some things that, that we can do uh, with, with Taiwan. I think they're learning some uh, very interesting lessons from uh, the Ukrainian conflict, like how important leadership is, how important small unit tactics are, how important an NCO core is, and, and really effective training with the right weapon systems and what those systems with the right people would be able uh, to do to thwart that. So I think I think we have to engage with our Indo-PACOM partners within the Department of Defense, uh, the Taiwan military and, and leadership to help them understand what this conflict has been about, what lessons they can learn, and, and where they should be focusing their dollars on defense and their training. Is there NCO core where it should be at this point? They have a they have a largely conscript force. I don't believe it is where it should be. Uh, and, and, and so the, um, the, the volunteer uh, part of, of their um, armed forces, is that where it should be, the non-conscript? They have a very, a very short enlistment period. Uh, I, I can provide you additional, additional details in a, in a written response. Okay. Uh, you also have written that the PLA Navy is the largest Navy in the world, and has the capability to conduct long-range precision strikes against land targets from its submarine and surface combatants. You later um, have written that Russia is fielding its new, quote, ultra-quiet submarine capable of threatening North America from the Pacific Ocean. General, do you assess that China and Russia will continue to grow both of their naval fleets and invest in new capabilities? Yes, I, I do believe they will both invest in new capabilities and grow their fleets. And is the United States on pace to build and commission as many ships as China is building? I would refer that question to the Secretary of Navy and Chief of Naval Operations. But, uh, but surely the intelligence community has an assessment of that. DIA has an assessment of Russian naval capabilities and uh, Chinese uh, PLAN capabilities. And, D um, and DIA is uh, familiar with what the plans of the, the public plans of the Navy are at this point. Broadly, uh, but I, I think that the Navy will make those investment decisions based on how they perceive the threat as well, and we'll certainly collaborate with uh, our partners in the Navy on any of that. Let me switch to Afghanistan. Um, Director Haynes, you submitted the 2022 Office of Director of National Intelligence um, annual threat assessment. Uh, on Afghanistan, the report says that the Taliban takeover threatens U.S. interest that 500,000 Afghan refugees could attempt to cross into surrounding countries, and almost certainly terrorist groups will establish and expand safe havens from which to plot attacks. So, uh, Madam Director, given these assessments in your office's annual threat assessment, would you assess that the chaotic U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan has left the homeland more susceptible to terrorist attacks? Thank you, Senator. I um, agreed with what General Barrier indicated earlier on about the threat, essentially, that we're seeing from al-Qaeda and from ISIS-K, which is to say that we see ISIS-K as the more concerning threat this P at this point, we do not assess that they currently have the capability to sexually uh, affect external 
attacks directed from Afghanistan uh, to the United States um, at this stage, but they could build that capability over time, and they certainly have the intent to do so. Uh, with al-Qaeda, we are not seeing um, as much of a threat, and uh, that doesn't mean that it couldn't grow over time, and that's obviously something that we're monitoring during this period. General Barrier, has, has the exit from Afghanistan left our homeland more vulnerable? Senator, I would say not more vulnerable, but, but this is certainly an issue that the intelligence community has to keep on, on, on the warm plate, if you will, to make sure that we can monitor those networks, what they're doing, um, and, and where they're migrating to. Thank you both. Thank you very much, Senator Wicker. Senator